Since the very beginning of set nine, most people believe that Caitlyn was a bottom tier legend. Excuse me? Even when she did get buffed, Draven took the spotlight instead. So how did top CM players finish top eight in tournaments with Caitlyn? Why are top challenger players suddenly gaining hundreds of LP with her right now? Is Caitlyn a hidden S tier legend and we all just bad the game? Well, good news. I did a ton of research and figure it out. Here's five steps on how to play Caitlyn to a top finish. Before we start, I want to give a shout out to the person that brought this to my attention, Joe Bookmark. Joe is a top player who averaged a 2.96 with 25 games since the patch started with a 92% top four rate and a 16% win rate. He currently sits at top 20 North American challenger at 1300 LP playing this strategy. Check out his Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash Joe Bookmark. Step zero, make sure to take the Caitlyn Legend and choose her 2-1 augment. In most games, you'll be offered a gold augment at 2-1 in the majority of your games. And this is why we play Caitlyn, to get Stars Are Born, which makes the next one cost and two cost purchases an automatic two-star unit. This gives you immense board strength early so you can snowball your lead. And that's the name of the game with Caitlyn. Tempo, 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 win streak, win streak, win streak. Step one, pick the 2-1 augment. The big key to this first step is to pre-level before stage two. This means to use four gold and hit the level button during stage 1-4, so that way, the next turn, you start with level 4 shop odds. This will increase the chance that you get more 2 costs for stars are born. Don't worry too much about holding pairs. You're making 2 stars after all. Now, choose your 2 star units. You generally aim for a 2 cost frontliner and a 1 cost backliner. This is because frontline units are more impactful early game as tanks, and 2 cost frontliners are very strong in set 9. But sometimes, you just gotta take that 2 star jinx of Soraka because it's too juicy. This step is the hardest and will take a lot of practice. This is because if you make a small mistake, you won't be able to full streak on stage two and carry that momentum. So make sure to try out many times to see if you can get stars or born reps so you can make the best decisions and activate that genius mode. I've seen even the best players make mistakes with stars or born. Here's my tier list for what to buy. To start things off at one cost, the best units are Malzahar, Samira, Cassiopeia, Jin, and Orianna. All five are really good at holding items and giving you a lot of tempo to kill units very quickly. Below them are one cost tanks that are also very solid to play around, such as Irelia, Cho'Gath, and Renekton. The units I want to avoid at one cost are Kale, Maokai, Poppy, Tristana, and Viego. The only times I'd ever consider making them is if I'm trying to re-roll, which is very rare if you're playing Stars Are Born. And here's my tier list for two costs. The best are Swain, Set, Kassin, Warwick, and Vi. All these two costs are fantastic frontliners that can hold items and get a lot done. The good tier is Soraka and Galio for Invokers, Jinx for Zaun and Gunners, and Kled for Noxus. Particular shout out to Jinx if you have a good Zaun mod. The units I avoid are Ash, Talia, Timo, and Zed. Outside of Ash, the only times you buy Talia, Timo, and Zed are when you're trying to reroll them, which is on the rare side, and you're not really doing it with Stars Are Born. And remember, pick things that pair well with synergies. Don't just buy units that you think are good because they're both an S tier. Like, for example, you don't want Malzahar and Set together because they don't really match. In general, the traits that I think are pretty good right now early game are Sorcerers, Noxus, Invokers, Ionia, Shurima, and Challenger. And if you have a spot for Deadeye Gunner, you can also do that too. If you're wondering about Caitlyn's Silver and Prismatic 2-1 augments, I'll cover that later in this video. Step 2. Go for that Stage 2 win streak. Slam your items on units that are upgraded because 2 stars are generally better than 1 star, so you get more combat power. And since you don't have to worry too much about what you're buying in your early shops, you can use your time to scout. Scout for things like the early void knockups and avoid that, and ensure that early sniper units like Akshan aren't targeting your carry. Level at the usual intervals at level 5 at 2-5 and level 6 at 3-2, but if someone looks like they could potentially snap that win streak, you can level even earlier at 2-3 for level 5 and 3-1 for level 6. Step 3 build up that economy. While maintaining your win streak, make sure that you're hitting those gold interest points. Gaining 50 gold with a full win streak is the best possible start, but it's unlikely to happen every single game. But that's the other great part about Stars Are Born. You get six extra gold so you can jumpstart your economy and start hitting that interest threshold as soon as 2-1, even though you upgrade everything. You can sell your bench and just start making sure that you win streak and have a bunch of gold. At level six, try not to roll unless you're losing by a lot of units, which I usually define as losing by half your opponent's board or more. If you have a great opener, you likely never have to roll on six and can go straight to level seven. And if you lose your streak, that's okay. Just focus on making gold for now. Step four, choose how you're going to level the seven. The decision on whether to level to seven on three, five or four, one, as well as the decision of when you need to roll at seven at all will vary from game to game. Here are my general rules. If you're ahead and win streaking, 
push to level 7 at 3-5. If you are high HP but no streak, go at 4-1. If you are low HP and full streak, complain to Riot Games support line. Just kidding, just, just level that 3-5 and roll it down. However, try not to fall into the trap of leveling up and not having a lot of gold. I try not to make sure that I go below 20 when leveling the 7. Remember, you're ultimately still trying to get to level 8 and level 9, unless you're playing something that requires you to stay at 7 for rerolling. Step 5. Evaluate your items and pick your composition. Because you'll be far ahead in HP, you're likely going to be last pick on carousel, meaning you just have to play whatever the items are saying you should play. Try to evaluate what the direction the game is telling you based off your offensive components. For example, if you get a lot of rods and tears, that means you should probably play an AP comp like Sorcerer Lux or Shurima Azir. If you get a lot of swords and bows, play an AD comp like Failure at Akshan or Zonzeri. From there, pick any of the top comps you feel comfortable playing. If you need some comp recommendation, here's two videos to help you get started, but even though it's for this patch, you can also apply this to future patches as well. While most of the times you're going to be playing the usual four cost comps, if you're still somehow win streaking with lots of HP, you can consider going to level nine and playing around five cost legendaries such as Ari, Belveth, Aatrox, and Heimerdinger. And if you need recommendations on those kinds of boards, check out my Dragon King video on how to play around legendary boards. All right, so we covered the five important macro steps. Here's a couple of bonus tips. Bonus tip number one, avoid picking Caitlyn's 3-2 and 4-2 augments. In general, Caitlyn's augments on 3-2 and 4-2 are not very reliable, so avoid them unless you have no other option. The only times you'd pick knowledge download is if you're trying to push levels for access to things like legendary five costs. For example, if you start off with level up or medium and shopping and didn't get stars or born a 2 1, that's a time where you can consider picking knowledge download. The only times you would pick her 4 2 rolling for days augments are if you're in a spot where you desperately want to re roll something. For example, if you're in a spot where you need to hit your three star three cost unit at level seven very quickly. Bonus tip. Two, should you pick her silver or prismatic 2-1 augment? Caitlyn's 2-1 silver and prismatic are situationally pretty solid. The only thing is that sometimes they're high risk and low payoff. 1-2-3 can give you strong direction and tempo if you hit things like Piltover or Noxus. And Starter Kick can potentially give you strong forecast to play around, but some of the best are way better than the rest. My general tier list for the forecast that you can hit with Starter Kit are Urgot, which gives you Jin, Sejuani with a Bruiser, Shen with a Cassio, and Lux with a Sorcerer. The solid ones are Aphelios with Jin, Yasuo with a random challenger, and Nasus with any Shurima. The rest currently on this patch are hard to make work like Jarvan and Kaisa. So again, starter kit is high risk with a pretty decent reward, but if you do end up hitting some of those units, your game might be really awkward. The biggest weakness of starter kit is stage three and five, because stage two and four is when you get your four cost, so you have to make sure to capitalize on it when you can. So there you have it, my five steps on how to play the Caitlyn Legend to a top finish. Truly a rising star in the current meta. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.